Hello, welcome to Pro Tips 41, where today I'm going to be talking about uplinks. Now, if you are not aware of what an uplink is in the Landsweeper context, I don't blame you. Uh, not a lot of people do. Uh, only if you've looked a lot at your switches and specifically the interfaces of your switches, you might, uplink might ring a bell there. Uh, but basically, uplinks are displayed or there's an uplink name displayed after a actual interface of a network switch if four or more devices are connected to one single switch interface. Um, now, this can happen quite often in virtual environments when you have a server that is hosting more than four virtual machines, in which case when you look at your switch, you'll just see one port having the name uplink behind it instead of actually showing the connected devices. Usually, what Landsweeper does is it looks at all of your network ports of a switch, it takes a look at what MAC address is connected to it, and then cross-checks that with the MAC addresses of all the other assets that you have in your Landsweeper database. Then once a match is found, you can actually, or Landsweeper will automatically hyperlink the asset to the actual switch ports. You can actually go from the overview of all your switch ports directly to a specific asset page that has been connected then to that switch port. But in this case, as I mentioned, if you have more than four devices connected to a single switch port, it'll just show uplink instead of a list of those well, four or more devices. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today is seeing how you can change that behavior and actually get a full overview of all of the devices connected to your switch ports. Um, so to actually start with that, we're gonna head into Landsweeper and I'll show you exactly where you can change the settings, uh, how the behavior will change and, and show you all of the steps needed to get a full overview of all of the devices connected to your network equipment. So here we are within Landsweeper Classic. Uh, I'm starting in Landsweeper Classic for a very specific reason, and that is that the actual setting to change what is considered an uplink or what the threshold is for Landsweeper displaying uh, uplink behind the actual network interface is something you can only change at the moment in Landsweeper Classic. Uh, before I head over to the setting itself, I have created a dashboard um, for which some of these reports you will be able to find in the written version, the blog version of this Pro Tips as well. So if you want to grab these reports and use them in your own classic installation um, or in your Landsweeper Cloud site, then you can go and grab those from the blog. Um, now, two of the things that I created, or three of the things that I created here, is, is the one in, this, in the middle here, this chart. Um, that will just show you, um, at the moment, I only have one switch that has an uplink, but it basically shows you a list of all of your switches um, or routers or other network equipment that have a network interface that counts as an uplink and how many of those they have. So in this scenario, we have this specific switch which has two uplinks. Um, I've also, aside from having this in a chart, I've also just put this in a regular report, as you can see here on the right-hand side where we just have the asset name which is hyperlinked, so we can quickly navigate to it later on, as well as how many uplinks it has. And I've added a report there as well that you can add to a dashboard that shows you what the current settings are for each of your scanning server. And as you can see right now, my only scanning server, um, its threshold for counting an interface or counting it as an uplink is set to four, which is the default. Um, so before we actually go and change the setting, I'll quickly navigate to the actual assets. You can see what this looks like when it's at its default settings. Uh, if I browse down here, you can see in these two ports here, instead of showing the assets as it does above, it just shows uplink, meaning that there are four or more, well actually more than four devices connected to these specific ports. Uh, to change this behavior, we have to go to configuration where under server options, you'll find somewhere near the bottom, you'll see here switch scanning. It also has a KB article, so if you want more information, you can always head over to the KB article, but that basically this, you know, more or less uh, ex explains the same thing that I'm explaining here. Um, and then it says here, you know, um, it'll basically it'll, you can change the number here that will decide at, uh, you know, after which how many devices is it shown as an uplink, the actual interface. Uh, I'm going to change this from four to 10. Um, and then the next thing that you'll need to do is now that the setting has been changed, um, to actually quickly go back to my switch. I'm just going to follow the link on my dashboard that I created. Um, you'll have to rescan all of your switches or the switches that it would apply to. So I'm going to go over to the asset page, do a manual rescan here so that it actually rescans all of the data and it grabs all of those devices that are behind that 
actual interface and also links them correctly. Um, so we have now a few minutes here to wait for it to rescan all of that data. Um, and then I'll show you what this actually looks like. Five hours later. So now that the scan has completed, uh, I can scroll down and you'll see that instead of just having the uplink here, you can see all of the devices and MAC addresses that are connected to that specific port, uh, as well as the second one here, which is slightly less, obviously. Um, but now we actually have a full overview of all of the devices connected to our switch instead of just having that uplink sitting there and not really providing us with a lot of information. One thing to note with this setting is that if you do have like a lot of devices connected to um, a specific port or you have like another switch connected to a port of you know your first switch um, if you start kind of connecting them that way it can lead to performance degradation so you have to be careful with how high you actually put that setting but it's something you can experiment with if it takes too long if it's too slow for you um, you can always you know put it and you know, turn it down again um, but at least this way you know how to actually get an overview of all of these devices um, in your environment and you're not just stuck with having to look at something that says uplink uh, without any additional information. Now, um, I've shown this in the LAN Super Classic. Uh, I'm gonna jump over to uh, LAN Super's cloud site. The first thing I'm gonna show you is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do have that report for the number of interface uplinks as we have that in the cloud as well so you can add it to any dashboard that you have in the cloud um, you can add that report to that dashboard um, so we're actually going to take a look at that specific asset again in cloud just to show you what it looks like in cloud so i'm going to go to inventory i already have the name ready so i can quickly find it and then here we head over to config where we get all of the network interfaces um, now I'm going to quickly expand this so that we get a bigger view. And then what you might notice the first time you do this is that, as you can see here, it is still saying uplink. Um, that is because this asset has probably not been resynced recently. So I'm going to quickly resync this asset. So it grabs, basically does a full refresh of all of the data. Shouldn't take too long for it to happen and then we can also see all the devices in our cloud site that are linked to these two specific network interfaces. Five hours later. So now that our asset has been resynced, if I scroll down a bit, you'll see that there's actually an asset listed here next to this port, as well as the number of additional assets that are also linked to that network interface. Now, aside from just being able to see this on this level, so on the switch itself, um, the added benefit here is as well that now that we have this information, now that Landsuper has actually created the relations between that switch port and the assets, that means that this, these changes also take effect in diagrams. So if I head over to my diagram of my test installation, it means that aside from just uh, having that additional information on my asset page, I now also have all of those additional assets that are automatically already linked on my diagram, which means that if I take a look at uh, all of the assets connected to my switch, there will be more assets than that there were before I actually increased the threshold for what counts as an uplink. So now all those additional 29-ish devices that I um, that I showed earlier, those will all be added to your actual diagrams. So you'll have more complete diagrams as well if you up the limit of this specific setting as well. Um, so it's an important part if you do use diagrams to also take a look at if you wanna use that or not. Again, keep in mind the performance that it does take or that it does require um, in order to get that extra information. But if that's no issue for you, then it's definitely worth upping that limit so you can get all of the assets in your views, regardless of whether it's looking at the actual switch assets page or when you use diagrams to have all of those devices in there and nothing left out or that you don't need to create those relations manually. Um, because in this way, they're actually done automatically, which makes it obviously a lot easier. 
so with that, I think I've shown you everything there is around these uh, uplinks, how you can change the setting, where you can use it. Um, as I mentioned, all of the reports that you've seen or that I've shown are available in the written version. So you can go to the blog, grab those there, as well as um, if you want to reread anything, if you want to see the steps again, anything like that. Um, it's all there in the blog post as well. So you can take a look at it there again. And that'll be it for this time. I'll see you next time.